Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Supernatural Creatures and Lore podcast, a special episode where we do not talk about a creature, monster, ghost, goblin of the week for this episode connected to any of the episodes to the now ended TV series Supernatural. Tonight, Mel and I are actually going to talk with somebody that's been on Supernatural for 20 episodes. She played Sheriff Jody Mills. We have actress Kim Rhodes on the show with us. Thank you for coming on the show with us, Kim. Hello, thank you for having me. And I'm kind of a monster of the week. Just me. Don't I count? Um, like, I guess, I mean, you dealt with it in the first episode that you premiered in. It was about your, like, yeah. zombie kid and then the zombie husband. I just mean me. Oh. I mean, just... To the just the the chaos that is Kim Rhodes. I I think I think I should qualify as a monster of the week. Why? What were your What are your monsters and demons? I just me. <laughs> I'm probably pretty easy to. I have a lot of. I ballistically feel at people. That's my superpower. Is that I I make people have feels that they might not be ready to confront. What are some of the feels? I don't know. People tell me I make them cry all the oh, time. <laughs> Just before we get started, you guys were talking about uh, monkeys in the rainforest or something? Yes. Okay. Well, sure. Yeah, as you yeah. do. I'm at the monkey. You're at the monkey part of uh, Japan. So I'm in the uh, Worcester. So I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts right now. It's 10 o'clock p.m. It's dark outside and about to snow. Uh, Kim is in California, right? I am. Yes. I, it is 7 o'clock in Los Angeles, and I'll tell you how cold. It's so cold. It's so cold. It is 59 degrees. And Mel is in Kyoto, Japan, and it's yeah. noon. <laughs> it is. We are all over the planet talking about this. There, we don't. The, the pandemic hasn't stopped anything. <laughs> no. no, it's just brought us closer together. Come on. Yeah, definitely. I wish I could be on camera with you guys because you're because Mel for for everyone listening, Mel is on a uh, web uh, on camera and Kim is on camera, but I don't have a camera in the recording studio at WCUW, so. Uh, before we get into Supernatural, Kim, I just got done rewatching Christmas with the Cranks. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you in that. I was like, oh my God, she was in Christmas with the Cranks? That's awesome. <laughs> I was. I auditioned originally for a awesome. character that was a tanning parlor person. Was there a tanning parlor? Yeah, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis has an embarrassing tanning parlor thing yes. where she's like in a that... bikini and like everyone's staring at her in a bikini getting a tan. And it's supposed to be like uncomfortable because she's not supposed to be like Jamie Lee Curtis from like True Lies. She's supposed to be Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, schlubby housewife. You know, it's not supposed to be like comfortable for her to be in a bikini kind of thing. Ugh. 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 That old trope. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I auditioned for that character. But the director liked me enough so that I didn't get that role, but he put me someplace else because he thought he just wanted me to – he was like, I like her. Throw her in someplace. So I think that's what happened. Joe Roth directed that. Is that – uh, I do remember Christmas with the Cranks. One of the most annoying things about that movie is that there's no way in hell everyone in society acts – yes, Joe Roth – acts like there the way go. they do – towards people who don't celebrate Christmas in that movie. Because it's like, what did they... Just imagine what they act like towards the Jewish people in the neighborhood. It was... <laughs> yeah. There, there, was, there, was a, there was a very high level of suspension of disbelief created. Now, uh, I know Mel... Uh, you can attest to this, Mel. You've done, like, you know, some type of, like, uh, training with weapons and combat and stuff like that. But Kim, you're trained in stage uh, weapons like a rapier and swords. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, so. I have a master's degree in acting, um, but it, most most theater programs focus on stage acting. And so I took three years of stage combat and was certified certified in hand to hand rapier and dagger and quarter staff. Wow. Um, so yeah, that that was a long ass time ago, but it cu it still came in handy for Supernatural because I knew the basics of stage combat. So I knew, you know, kind of physical the the real simple hand to hand stuff. So they could use me a lot, and I was game to try a lot. Um, so I could you know sell a punch, and I could remember to miss when throwing a punch two important things when in a fight scene with very pretty expensive faces. <laughs> Theirs, not mine. Not mine. Theirs. Mel, did you want to ask Kim something before I go into the next question? <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite part of Jim Mills? Your favorite thing about Jim Mills? 
My favorite thing about Jody Mills is she, she how willing she is to stand back up after being beaten. And this is where again we are we, we are recording now, right? We're we not just We are 100% chatting. recording. Yeah. Okay, yes, we are 100% recording and for those of you listening who know me, I have been cautioned against F bombs. So, as a result, I'm going to tread through this next answer as if I am crossing a stream in shoes I don't want to get wet because I have to pick my spots carefully without cussing. You can also just so, say F this, F that. That's fine too. You know. I, I can't though. I can't. Oh, okay. I can't. If I could say that, then I wouldn't cuss as much as I do. Or say frack. <laughs> say frack like on Battlestar Galactica they used to say frack a lot. I, I can't. I still have to think about that. The word, <laughs> the F-bomb just flows from me so freely. It's like it's like tears from my eyes or sweat from my forehead. You must have been um, fun on set. <laughs> so I've got to. Th- so I've got to think about what I talk about. So back to what was my favorite part. So Jody gets hurt and is still so willing to stand up and put herself in a situation where she's hurt again. And I mean that both physically. Like how many times did that girl get her knee blown out? Oh my God. And yet she's still just, yeah. But, and I loved that. I loved that they didn't treat Jody with kid gloves. They weren't afraid to really just m- make a mess of her. That was me trying to come up with a clean way of saying that. But she also did it emotionally. Um, over and over and over she saw she experienced the painful effects of love and loss and over and over and over she kept opening her heart and opening her heart and loving and loving and loving um in spite of knowing how painful it was she just was really willing uh and to me that is brave that is true courage when you know how much something is going to hurt and you're scared of it and you do it anyway We, what did I say? Oh, uh, I might have hit Why that. Why did you mute me? Oh, I muted because there was a buzzy sound. I was try- I thought maybe I could click to unmute it and mute it really fast or whatever, but I didn't realize it gives controls to you. So, Oh, that's what I need is more control in this world. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a – have you ever had a, a- – bone break like the way jody is constantly because i remember the one i remember one episode where you just right after the broke the the leg breaks you go damn it not the leg again <laughs> not that leg yeah. um i have fractured a total of seven transverse process which are parts of the vertebra and one rib all within the last two years wow fancy i'm fancy um you know, honestly, I don't. I, as much fun as it is to see you with like Sam and Dean, uh, Jensen and Jared, your your best on screen relationship was with uh, the other sheriff, uh, Donna. B, yeah, Brianna and I, yes. Yeah. That that's so much fun, especially the episode you guys go to the convention together and you girl talk about like your husbands, like you your your husband was you know murdered by your child and her husband left her for another more attractive woman. <laughs> I know. But, yeah. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you guys can totally relate. <laughs> yeah. Um, she, well, and that also comes from the fact that Brianna and I just hit it off. It was inevitable that we would be real life friends. And we still talk once a week. Um, for a while, we had a podcast, but life just got messy and she had to go back to Canada. Um, but uh, that is, that chemistry is 100% real there wasn't really any but i mean and i don't mean there wasn't really anybody by having a, a, I, I mean there wasn't anyone on that set that i didn't genuinely care for um but brianna and i fit in a pretty magical way that's great mel go ahead okay um is there any characters from the show Supernatural that you're... you wanted to work with but didn't get a chance Mel, to? Mel, you're, you're oh, breaking yeah. up pretty badly. Oh, but I got it. Okay. She, asked, she asked if there was any characters that I wanted to work with but didn't get a chance to. Um, I, I regret... I'm happy for the brief period that Jody got to work with Crowley. I do wish she'd had more extensive interaction with Castiel. And it 
kills me that she never got to confront and work with Rowena. I mean, come on, Jody and Rowena trying to figure each other out. Oh and yeah. Ruth, Ruth also is one of my dear, dear friends. So I think we would have had a blast together. But those two extremely different flavors of feminine energy working and and cross purposes with each oh that would have been so fun we had big plans if wayward had gone we we all had yeah. secret emotional plans for rowena to be you know to bring the the feminine and also i mean and elena oh that um, would have been perfect think, that could have yeah, been your perfect Abaddon, like go-to gal Abaddon over yeah. yeah like to call upon for help and stuff like that despite the fact you know you're making deals with bad people that are going to come back to bite you and she'll call yep. back those deals or whatever in bad yeah. ways but it that would have been a perfect that she would have been i mean obviously besides the fact she's the mother of crowley that would have been your perfect crowley character that's what i the perfect foil friend frenemy um the entire it just it, it would have been yeah so that's that i think is is my final answer is I really wish because it just doesn't isn't it exciting just to think about what would have it happened is. with Jody and Rowena on the screen together now this is a very unpopular opinion we haven't gotten the feedback yet from listeners me saying this and I know Mel cries when I say this but um after 15 no. years I'm I'm pretty happy Supernatural finally ended okay I mean I I love the show and I love the characters but it just felt like it, the train just kept going past the stop at that's certain about, points, I mean that that's a uh, look. Here's the here's my here's my like milk toast soapbox. I'm going to lay gently down. Um, there aren't a lot of people that are fans of this show that don't have feelings about it ending, and everyone has valid feelings. Yeah, I mean, there's you're not. It, it, and that's that's rough because when somebody else's feelings seem to conflict with yours it would seem like only one person has the right to have these feelings and that's not true that's not the way life works we all had individual unique relationships with the show and so we're all going to have an individual unique feeling when it culminates um so you're you know your your feelings are just as valid as somebody who says no i think it should have gone into the grave with me <laughs> <laughs> that's me <laughs> <laughs> but i would have liked to seen you know your show happen i don't know if I, I i mean i don't want it to go on and on and on and on but i would like to have had it like actually happen you know what i mean for a few seasons you know what i mean they oh. came to you and said hey we're gonna do the show now we got picked up we have a four-year plan and you'd be like, that's great. I got a four-year job, and I'm the star of the show now with the girls underneath me. And where, you know, it's Jody Mills and the girls, Sheriff Jody Mills and the girls, hunting the demons or whatever, you know, police procedural style instead of it being all over the country with lawlessness like the boys had. So yeah. that would have been kind of cool. Um, did you have a pilot that we could ever watch? Do you think it will be on, like, a collector's edition complete box set one day? The pilot aired. Uh, the pilot the pilot is the episode that aired. That was the pilot. Oh, there wasn't um, another pilot. I don't know. I mean, like an actual show. No, ep well, first episode. See, and so this was the, this was one of the this is one of the you know devil you know devil you don't kind of bargains. Is that so? If a standalone pilot had been made, um, no one ever would have seen it. But it could have been only about the show it wouldn't have needed to incorporate supernatural so that's a good news bad news because the good news is it was created because of f the fans asking for it and so it was given to the fans um but on the downside it didn't get to actually flesh out as a pilot because it had to serve supernatural it was an episode of supernatural it was two episodes of supernatural so um so I don't know if that harmed or helped it, but uh, it did shift the storytelling perspective from being 100% about Wayward to very obviously needing to honor the fact that it was an episode of Supernatural. 
So it needed to it needed to be consistent with that. I think Phil Segrecia did an incredible job directing it in a way that still told this unique story, but stayed in the world and true to the momentum of the series. Gotcha. That was- I still think there's a future for it. It's dead. It's super dead. Like there's there's a there's a time limit on intellectual content. Right, and also it's like um, I, yeah. I I I I I had wanted to be around with the knowledge that Sam and Dean are still doing their thing, and you can pick up the phone and call them. But with like now that we know what happened, for anyone who didn't watch it, we, I mean, I'm not gonna give it away, but obviously it's pretty definitive what happens with Sam and Dean or whatever. I don't want to. I don't now. I definitely don't want a spinoff show of like knowing. Well, Sam's off with his happy life, and Dean is in his yeah, happy I know. Days. It, it just—it would be so weird. It would it be would so be... weird. It would just it would, be like, yeah. and then what, you, what are you gonna do? Mention that, like, oh, do you remember what happened to Dean? Yeah. Well, did you hear about Sam had the baby? Yay! I mean, to be fair, <laughs> nobody ever really dies. No, that's true. I mean, let's, but you know, we can pull him back out of heaven. What the heck? <laughs> did you, you did come on back? Out of yeah. a lot of out of the characters who have died and come back, Jody never died. She almost died in at Crowley's hands. You never died. I a fake me died once. Um, did you I die? In, did you die in Apocalypse World? No, no, I died in an imagine in somebody was showing Sam the awful future that he was moving towards. And I died in an alternate future. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. I'm a big yeah. fan of tattoos myself, by the way. So what do you have on your arm for tattoos that nobody can see um, that we're talking about? <laughs> so this is this is my family oh arm. Oh my god. Um, it's just it's, it's to your shoulder to your to your wrist. It's my daughter. It's so this is a blue morph. So my daughter is a butterfly in a caterpillar world. Tabitha? And um, so, yes, my Tabitha. So this is a blue morpho, and then it's done like a scientific diagram. So this is the magnified scales, like a dragon, to remind her. And this is the magnification of the face, like a little alien, because she's a little alien. And then this is the part she, I know your people can't see this, but I'm showing you. So this <laughs> is a, she drew this. That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And then moving further down, family, like my my own version of family really is within a crow. And so this is a crow, and there is the crow she drew. Oh. But, yeah, it's and it's actually not even done. Um, we still have more of the, to, like, more just to fill in and fill out, and, you know, it just keeps going. Yes. And then I've got another one on my stomach and back. You don't have to show us those. It's okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's a little. That's when I start taking off my pants, and that's old, that's for podcast too. <laughs> so she's gonna come back for the late night late night yeah. show where we talk. Yeah. Like, look, if I can't do f bombs, I'm not taking off my clothes for you. We, it's we, just that simple. We pour a little wine. <laughs> we talk a little slower. <laughs> What's funny is that so uh, it's no secret, Mel. Uh, you do uh, modeling that's uh, a little bit more adult. <laughs> And I do audiobooks that are on the erotic nature side. So yes, yes, I work on. Uh, I'm the editor producer of five BDSM romantic comedies of two women who meet each other online who don't know how to do a sub dom relationship. <laughs> and then the dinosaurs come in. Bless their heart. Wait, then the dinosaurs come in? No, there's no dinosaurs. <laughs> I wish. But one of them is a hardcore gamer. The other one's a uh, a writer, and so they they're like. You know they're by bi- they're pretty, they're mostly bisexual, but at the end of the story they get married, so they're pretty much full on lesbians. But they're uh, it's based on a comic book too, so. That's awesome. Yeah, it's the artwork. You got to look it up. It's called Sunstone. The artwork is effing beautiful. Okay. Sunstone, Sunstone. comic. All right. And then you look it up I on mean, your phone. I'll probably have to be careful when I look it up because my daughter. Oh yeah, has totally. To no, but if your if your husband sees it, he'll be like, "Honey." Do we, do we nah, need he would, no, he wouldn't be concerned at all. He'd just be like, "What? who told you something fun? <laughs> but you go to the bookstore and buy the comics and just be like, these are awesome. <laughs> Sunstone. Okay. Yes. All right. Mel, go ahead. Sorry. Mel, go ahead. What are the inside jokes you're allowed to tell us about? Show's over. You can talk about everything. <laughs> no. The inside jokes. There's got to be inside jokes, right? I don't, I don't. There's got to be some dark secret of Supernatural, right? 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, give it. Like, like, tell me what. T- tell me. Okay, there has to be episodes oh, that you were oh, in okay, so that here, you must here. have hated. <laughs> I no, because that's not like the other thing is, and this is I'm I'm kind of a bad podcast guest, but this is how I'm. No, no, it's okay. Planet, we're teasing you. So I I also can't really like I know things that are really funny that you'd love to hear, but they aren't my stories to tell, and so it's not really fair of me to say like, oh, this thing that somebody did to somebody when I, when like they should be in charge of whether or not fans hear about it yeah yeah um because to me it's like oh this is funny and harmless but they might be like no i never wanted anyone to know about that <laughs> so i'm trying to and i'm just really oh it almost came out um <laughs> i'm just really dull so what are the things that well we always hear misha collins oh, plays okay. pranks on people did he play a prank on you that that you were like was funny, but at the same time, you were like, oh, you SOB. Um, Jared picked me up once and spun me around when I wasn't expecting it, and it was like a carnival ride. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, I know. I, 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 and even that, they didn't... I, 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 th- I don't know why. They didn't... Like, there were, t- there were times they would tease me. Like, there was a lot of, you know very sweet funny teasing but they didn't do a lot of practical jokes with me primarily because when i was working we were usually late we were we were behind schedule we had a lot of stuff to do and it was two o'clock in the morning in the rain in mud so nobody really thinks hey you know what we're gonna do is let's blow a take on a funny funny idea i had um so, so it, this stuff was much more natural. Like, you know, I would trip and fall down, and they would make sure I was okay, and then laugh very hard at me. It was, it was more, it was more along that line. You know, uh, Mel, we should have prepared for one thing with uh, with Kim was uh, go through every one of her episodes and figure out what monsters that she fought. Um, and and uh, but I didn't do that unless you did. Uh, I've been kind of busy. No, I I fought vampires. Uh, been the biggest well, one. A lot of, lot of vampires. There were a lot of vampires. The zombies were the first one. A lot of vampires, leviathans. But I oh, never yeah. went, I was never face to face with leviathans. I just discovered the borax secret while cleaning Bobby's cabin. Oh, and it seeped through and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then there was so the, uh, yeah. what was the thing Bobby was killing when you come over to ward off that's the FBI, Leviathan. that was a little, Levi- no, 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 that was Leviathan. season, no, no, wasn't that season six? You come over and Bobby's like, I got a body in the yard. I got a body in the basement. And you're oh, like, geez, thing. Bobby. Oh, but weren't those vampires? Was it a vampire? Cause I remember one goes in the wood chipper. It was. Okay. Yeah, it was. No, I had a lot of vampires. All right. Yeah. Lots, because like one of the girls, one of the girls you were protecting was like vampire bait. Alex. Yes. Um, yes. Annie, Alex, Alexis, Ann, uh, Catherine Ramdean. That was the first time I got to work with her. Did you see, and, uh, did you see, by the way, Claire, uh, the actress who plays Claire's uh, movie, Freaky? Mm-mm. She's a uh, bubbly, like, blonde high school cheerleader who switches bodies with a serial killer played by Vince Vaughn. I want to see Wow. That. Yeah. I want to see it, but it's only playing in theaters, and I'm not. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, it's only playing in theaters. For some reason, Blumhouse decided to release it only in theaters, and everyone's like, "Are you nuts? Do you did you think the pandemic died for five minutes?" Like nobody we, understands nobody it. They away. they put they put they put uh the craft pre, uh remake on or sequel on video on demand, but they put the brand new horror movie Freaky in theaters. They should have done that in reverse because nobody liked the craft remake. Everyone wants to see that movie Freaky, but nobody is because of the pandemic. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> um, no, I did not. But no, I did. I, I did not. But to be fair, I haven't seen anything ever at all, ever. Uh, and, and like truly, the last thing I've seen was Good Omens. What was that? And, and on Amazon, right? Exactly. I think that was over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Oh, oh, the, oh, right. David yeah, Tennant's show. Mm-hmm. Did you mm-hmm. audition for that by chance? No, I just stalked Neil Gaiman passionately, <laughs> deeply. 
with a fervor and love that should not be allowed in public. No, it's okay. We all love Neil Gaiman. He's, he writes great stuff. But have you ever auditioned me, for anything of his? He let me, um, no, but he let me in the editing bay when they were editing it. So I got to see some of it before it was done. Cool. I got to meet Doug. It was very exciting. That's awesome. But no, I haven't. I don't know. No, he like, keeps, he's like, I'm like Lucy in the football. He keeps teasing me. I was, I, he, I guess now it's late enough. I'm allowed to say I, there was something that he wanted me to do in good omens, but it disappeared because of budget restrictions. So oh. that went away. And then there was something else he wanted me to work with him on. And, and, and that went away. I'm like Lucy and he's like Lucy and I'm Charlie Brown with the damn football. So now I just go on Twitter and all cap him adamantly. And he is very patient and kind and lovely. But point being, I haven't seen anything since that. And that's the level of what has to exist before I spend time watching stuff. Because most of my life is spent not watching things. I don't have time. Is there anything you auditioned for you didn't get that you could talk about? Everything. <laughs> Everything I've auditioned for I haven't gotten. Uh, I, I can tell you... Um, uh, I've, I've, the pandemic, I, I have a really lovely voiceover agent now. And so I've done a couple of video games. I don't think I can tell you about them. Don't One say anything which, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but I did, I did the English version of a really, really cool Japanese game that I think is supposed to come out here in November, maybe next month. Um, it was Amazing, and then I got to do some voices in another uh, another game that oh, is a, another big big thing. What's it called? It's a it's a merch. It's not. It's a whatever it is. Big things. So I've done a couple video games. I've had some really fun voiceover auditions, none of which I've booked, but I really like. I I, I found my sweet spot is um is chickens anthropomorphized chickens i do really good chickens and you'd be surprised how many characters these days are chickens apparently mel you've done some voiceover work we lost her oh no please tell me not we got like five oh, minutes left i thought that was i thought she was staring at me in disgust no I, like, I think she I, that's, uh, that's yeah that's we got right. like five minutes left so hopefully she can come back in before the uh the timer's up Mel? Uh, never anything as cool as... Mel, you are breaking up so badly. Oh, oh no! completely! All right, hopefully she can come back in. Um, last question uh, before we let you go. Um, yes. What did Supernatural do for you? Everything. Like, what did it change for you? I mean... Everything. everything. I, I've seen everything. what you've done between I then, can't. and I know you were on, a, you were on uh, Zach and Cody as a, re as a regular for, for so many years, but yes. what did Supernatural do for you personally? Well, let me tell you. So, I was on Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Hey, Mel, she's back. Barely. Yeah, yeah. Hi. And you would think, the, the way my brain had it was like, that was a trajectory. And that is not the case in Hollywood. Um, what happened was I got on the show, and then I had a baby, and then everything went away. Everything disappeared. Uh, my job went away. My house went away, because I don't know if you know this, but it, when you stop giving the bank money, they stop letting you live in your house. Uh, and when you don't have a job anymore, you have no money to give to the bank. It's really weird how that works. So, um, so <laughs> the damn bank. I, it's so strange, and uh, and so I I had a two year old and I was homeless and my husband was in Europe trying to work over there and it was and I just and my brain was and I was in. You mean this happens uh, to also, people in Hollywood too? <laughs> oh my god! It was it was and I had to get sober and it was a mess and. My let's see here. My dad was still alive, but he was very, very like it was all falling apart. It was just everything was falling apart. So supernatural saved you. Yeah. So supernatural has given me me. Wow. It's given me everything that I like about myself has either been discovered or expanded by supernatural, either the show or the fandom um, down to my daughter is autistic and my relationship with her has been formed by fans within the autistic community to the point where I was able to 
do some work on myself and discover over the summer that I am probably autistic. These are all things that came because people said, the way you are acting is not in accordance with who you say you want to be. We care about you. Please listen to us. And I don't know another fandom in the world that would have cared about me as an actor enough to inform me as a human how to be the human I want to be. So uh, it's, yeah, it's given me everything. That's good to hear. It's good to be able to say. Yeah. We, uh, oh no, what did I do? What are you doing? Are I you love crying? it. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> see? I'm at, see, it's my superpower. Um, you got me in the feels. <laughs> when the show ended, I will admit that I, I like, I cried a bit because I was just like, "God, this thing started like a year, like the year after I met my girlfriend, who would become my ex-wife eventually, uh, but <laughs> a year before my son was born. Like, my son has turned into, you know, the thing inside me to a fourteen-year-old boy now during the life of the show because he turned fourteen two weeks before the finale." So I was just like, holy cow, like that my son's evolution through life to from a young, from, you know, seedling to, you know, middle, you know, middle teenager now, uh, early teenager, whatever you want to call it, 14 year old teenager to like my radio show also going 13 years, you know, two years after Supernatural well and me covering every single season being like, do you know what came back on? Supernatural. Now we're going to talk about it. We're going to play all the music for the show this season. Oh my God. They just introduced new character, Crowley. And then they introduced this like amazing hot sheriff character, Jody Mills. And then they, so, you know, so we wax poetically about Jody Mills constantly. Cause I was just like, and she's like a woman and she's like a badass and she like takes no gump to whatever. And she's awesome. And the woman who plays it in real life looks amazing. So. Thanks. Hey you well i'm glad i got to be here with you thank you so much thank you for coming on the podcast we were glad that we were able to set it up after the show ended hopefully when the quarantine is over and pandemic is over whatever you know we're going to keep calling it is over you know you can go out to conventions again um and come oh, out yeah. to new england yes thank you so much this meant a lot to me <laughs> um <laughs> Kim, we want to let you go before the uh, Zoom call kills it, so I will reach out to Richard when I post it online. Thank you so much, and I'll make sure all my peeps know about it. Definitely. Are you on social media that you want to plug real quick? Oh, they can find me. Okay, will do. All right, thank you so much, Kim. <laughs> and you have a happy holiday, Kim. Happy, uh, happy, you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Take care, Love and you. enjoy Japan. <laughs> go get your boy. Bye. Bye. Bye, Kim. Thank you so much. All right, Mel. All right, I will uh, okay. post this. Uh, you know, hell, I will try to get this posted before we post the uh, side. Oh, no. Are you still there? Damn it. Nope. <laughs>